Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this gathering today, celebrating Sharon's life. On behalf of myself and the staff of Pierre Funeral Home, we would like to offer all of you our sincerest condolences and sympathies upon the loss of someone that's obviously meant something to you in some special way. To her family, to all of you uh, who are gathered here today, thank you for your presence uh, in her life while she was living, and thank you for your presence and support of her family following her death. To all of you as a community, thank you for wearing Norman out last night by coming to visit for so long. Um, what a wonderful outpouring of support and an outpouring of love and caring to he and his family. Um, thank you all for everything that you've done. I'd like to uh, begin this morning uh, with a few comments, and these comments come from people within our community. Shortly after Sharon died, I posted uh, the information so people could begin hearing about and dealing with some of the feelings and emotions that come with the loss of someone who dies unexpectedly in this way. And I simply put a post out uh, with her obituary once we knew the time of our service. And I wanted to read to you some of the comments that came in. This first one uh, from Patty Parker. Much love to you, Norman, Richard, Rodney, Nate, Jacob, and Chase. I was very fond of Sharon. I know she adored her family. Such a beautiful lady who will be always remembered and greatly missed. Hugs to you all. Roger Clink. Joyce and I are going to miss the sweet lady. She is one of the nicest persons you would want to meet. Heaven gained an angel. Janie Cummings wrote, she was my sister-in-law's aunt. I always enjoyed talking with her, and recently we were together at my nephew's and her great-nephew's wedding. She will be missed. Brenda Bean, prayers to the family. She was a very sweet lady. Teresa Sumbles, so sorry for your loss. My thoughts and prayers are with her many family members and friends. Sherry Anderson wrote, thoughts and prayers for the family. Robin Crow. Such a sweet lady sending my prayers to the family. Carolyn Turner. Oh, I just loved talking to Sharon. My deepest condolences to the family. Emily, Chamber Emily Chamberlain. She was always so sweet and gave the best hugs. I loved talking with her. Gary Lashley. Aunt Sharon was the best Sunday school teacher. She will be missed by all. She was always so prepared for the lessons and related things in a way we could all understand. Lauren Kern wrote this. Sharon and Dorothy Niehaus were incredible Sunday school teachers who really wanted us kiddos to know the Bible stories and God's love. We were lucky to have Sharon to set us straight and get ready for confirmation classes. <laughs> Kind of reminds me of a story you were telling me the other day about the table and uh, getting chased out of the house, right? Yeah, set us straight. Linda Messel wrote, I'm so sorry to hear about the passing of Sharon. And the last comment that I'll share this morning from Jerry Schweikart, so sorry for your loss. My thoughts and prayers are with you all. I share that this morning because it speaks to the support that comes from people within this congregation this morning, and also the support that comes from people beyond this space. We offer all of you all of the support and care that we can, and we pray for your well-being, and we pray for your journey into this next chapter. We will celebrate today with singing, with song, with remembrances, we will begin with a prayer. Would you please join me? Dear gracious God, we understand that you give to us the serenity to accept the things we cannot change, the courage to change the things we can, and the wisdom to know the difference. And so we come to you today in prayer, praying for one another in our need and for all anywhere who mourn with us this day. To those who doubt, we pray that you give them the light of your spirit. For those who are feeling weak, restore within them strength. 
those who are feeling sorrowful. Grant their soul in due time a spirit and feeling of peace. Keep true in us the love with which we hold each other. Dear gracious God, all that you have given us is yours. You gave us Sharon, and now we prepare to celebrate all that was good and loving and kind, and we give her back to you. We ask all of this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and each of us on this day, one God forever and ever. Amen. The first song that we'll sing together is picked first for a reason. And that first for a reason is this was, if not, one of her favorites, Sharon's favorite song. And so I'm going to ask you to do me a favor. I know we're sad. I know we're just getting going. I know you might not feel like it. But in honor of her and in honor of the spirit of healing and hope that comes in a gathering like this, if you feel like standing, and I would invite you to do so, let's sing together in honor of Sharon this morning in the garden. Okay? Please be seated. Very nice. I think she approved. Um, I don't know if you noticed. Uh, I noticed when we started singing, uh, sunlight showered the sanctuary. So 
Nicely done. Yes, right. I want to um, move us now into our scripture readings for today. This first scripture that will be read uh, by Reverend Steve is a reading from the 23rd Psalm. This same psalm was shared right from this lectern on March 3rd, 2018, for your sister and your daughter's, your mom's funeral. And it speaks to the journey that uh, we continue to move through. And it continues to speak to the hope that we have as we journey forward. And so, Steve, if you would like to come forward and read for us this 23rd Psalm, please. Isn't it good that we are here? Wow. You know, there's much sadness in my heart, but there's joy too. Joy in knowing about living. And I am just very impressed having these banners up behind me. And one of them's in the, on a piece of wood right there in the lid, you know. And it's all about God. So you can read along with me as in your mind, and but it's for us. I read the Psalm 23rd in a lot of weddings as well. It's a way of life. So listen. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures and he leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths. For his name's sake, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. For God, you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me. In the presence of my enemies, you anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows Surely, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Is that not good that we are here? Amen and amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John, chapter 14. The words that Jesus shared generations ago are words that apply to us today. To do the best we can to not let your hearts be troubled. To do the best we can to believe in God and to believe also in me, Jesus says. In my Father's house there are many rooms. There are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and I will take you to myself. So that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place that I am going. And Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where, we, where you are going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to him these simple words, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. Here ends the reading of our Holy Gospel. I would invite you to remain seated as we sing together what a friend we have in Jesus.
There's a lot of things I've thought about since Monday. Sometimes you think you have the words that you want to share, and then sometimes you don't feel like you have any words. Sometimes when moments like this occur, you feel like you have all of your emotions in check, and then there are times when you feel like you don't at all. There are memories that might come to mind from time to time of moments, of experiences, of discussions. Sometimes those memories and those thoughts are things that you may have thought you've forgotten, and for some reason they rush back. One of the things that continue to come to mind as they did when you called me Monday, Norman, and after I left your home, is seeing you guys sitting right over there together. I saw that uh, for the last seven years. For those that have been coming to this church for many years, they've seen you guys there for, gosh, I don't know how long, 107 years you guys have been sitting over there together? And that changed. What's that? Why not? Yeah. And it changed. Another thing that came to mind was when we were sitting at the kitchen table in your home and with your grandchildren and Richard, and I knew the funeral home was on their way. I, I said to everyone, well, Jim had just told me that they're on their way, and so they're going to be here in about 15 or 20 minutes. I'm wondering what you guys want to do. And I said, boys, when your mother died, you were pretty young. And that was a, a very different situation at that time. And you weren't the age that you are now. You were little guys. And I said, you're pretty well grown now. What do you want to do? Do you want to go in and see your grandmother before they get here? Or would you rather see her at the funeral? And you all said, we would like to go see her. And so we did. And we went into her room. And us four stood together. We offered our final remembrances. And we joined hands. And we shared in a prayer. And we went back to sit in the kitchen. And you loved each other and you cared for each other. Why do I remember that? I remember that for a number of reasons. But I remember it primarily because of what I believe Sharon stood for her entire life. There are no lessons, I believe, about the art of mothering that we didn't learn from her. We can only do our best and hope that we do it well, and I would contend that she gets an A++, even if she chased you out of the house. <laughs> even if from time to time, if you didn't like the spaghetti, or if you didn't like the food, or you just got on her nerves, well, you had to know about it. In this category, she gets an A++, and not just with her own family which is the reason why I shared some of those posts that came in all week long on that Facebook feed. She was caring and supportive. She was a loving wife and a mother, a sister, grandmother, a great friend. She wasn't just a housewife. She was a homemaker. It's a difference. Everywhere you turn, there's evidence of sharing in the house. Because uh, I know, Norman, you didn't put the pictures up. Norman, I know you didn't put all the food on the table. You helped bring it there, but she made it. To the garden, to the bookwork, to the photos, to the medicines, to the cans and cans of vegetables that get put up in the fall. 
In her home, like many homes, there's one thing that never happened. No one ever went hungry unless you chose to. No one ever went without. She always made sure that that was the case, all the while finding the time to always take time to care for each of you. You were a lucky man, Norman. Blind date? Come on. Blind date? You didn't even want to go. You're like, I don't know. There's some cattle out here. I could tend to this. I got, got the backyard. I didn't get mowed on Tuesday. I guess I'll go. But you went. And like you told me, I don't remember what the movie was, but I remember what she looked like. Because it was love at first sight. And it's been that way ever since. Married in 1964 on the 1st of August, 58 years when you were celebrating your first anniversary might have seemed like a long time. But now that you are sitting here in this spot 58 years later, it seems like it can go by in a flash. And I'm sure we all feel the same in some way. Rodney? There's going to come some time when you go back to Florida and you're not here and all of the people that are around you aren't as close to you as they are now and you're going to want to get that phone call. You might even feel like something's missing. I don't know what it is. That's right. I was always talking with my mom on the phone. Remember that people love you even after today. Remember that even though you miss your mother, people care for you. And the feelings that you have come from the love that you have for her and the love that she has for you. The unconditional love that she had for you and her understanding, the support that she gave you, is going to be carried on through the support that you're going to give to others. You might have to chase these little guys who aren't so little anymore out of your house too from time to time. <laughs> but you're going to love them and you are going to be a role model for them and you are going to be understanding and unconditional for them as well. You get that from your mother. Boys, you've been through a lot. Seems like we gather in this sanctuary too frequently and talk about celebrating the loss of somebody that we loved. Like when we gathered for your mama, this sanctuary was filled then also. Continue to know that people deeply, deeply want you to succeed and to not have these things hold you back forever. These moments of challenge are moments that you will never, ever forget. I hope you just don't remember the challenge. I hope you remember the love. I hope you remember the moments. And I hope you have memories that carry you forward in a positive way. Your grandmother moved forward through those challenges with hope and with appreciation for the next day. Take her example and try to live your life the same way. Your futures are so bright. I'm going to miss her being here at the church, and I'm going to miss those quiet conversations that we had following worship and even before worship. Why didn't Sharon say so much? Because she couldn't get a word in edgewise when Norman was close by. When you found out you were going to have twins, you didn't know they were twins. And I love this statement, because I, I think it speaks so strongly to the love that exists between us and Sharon and Sharon to us. When Norman, you said to her, what are we going to do with twins? I didn't know we were going to have twins. What are we going to do now? Her answer, spot on. We're going to take them home and love them. That's what we're going to do. 
all of those relationship things were essential to her, like taking you guys shopping for your birthday presents, like being here at church at 9 a.m. in the morning. Why do people come to church at 9 a.m. in the morning when it doesn't start till 10 o'clock? Who would think of such a thing, right? Well, you come to church at 9 o'clock in the morning for the same reasons you continue to love other people and they love you back, because you want to see them. And you want to come in the church and you want to sit in the church pew and you just want to look up at the altar. You want to hear the music playing and you want to meditate on the week and you want that feeling of belonging and purpose. And she did. A few weeks ago, we did a fun little thing after church right at Epiphany. And it's centered around choosing a word on a star. Like this. So rather than choosing a word for the year, whatever your word might be, determination, stick to joy, companionship, compassion, choosing your own word to drive you through your year, like the star that brought the wise men to the stable of Jesus generations ago, we had a basket full of stars with words on them that we randomly chose. So rather than choosing our word, we, uh, we took a different approach, and it was our star words chose us. This was her star that was by her bed in her room. And the word that chose her that Sunday was marvel. Marvel. The definition of marvel, to be filled with wonder or astonishment. A wonderful or astonishing person or thing. Marvel. Through all of these incredible moments that we celebrate today, we know that Sharon's life wasn't without struggle, but it didn't take the marvel out of life for her. These moments that she lived through seemed unfair had no definite explanation. Caused questions like, why would that happen? Why them? Why now? Of course we would ask such questions. And of course she felt that way. When feelings that come into our lives from the deaths of someone we love, sometimes it's hard to make sense initially. Maybe some of you are gathered here today feeling the same way. Things don't seem so marvelous. Things don't seem so wonderful or astonishing. If you are, I encourage you to honor her by handling moments like this in the manner in which she did. By remembering that the Lord is our shepherd. By remembering that the Lord sets a table before us in the presence of our enemies, whatever those enemies may be, and that our cup overflows. I beg you today to honor her life by understanding that even in the midst of the depths of grief and sadness, there is a foundation that trusts and has faith in the psalmist who wrote, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And what? shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. She believed that. She taught that. It was a foundation throughout the entirety of her life. And on Monday morning, when her life ended, she was awarded a room in her creator's house where there are many rooms. And she was greeted by Sandy. She was greeted by Donnie. 
He was greeted by Dorothy and Beverly and Morris and Alan and Kenneth and Ronald and Michael and friends and family. They were there for her. And they'll be there to greet us too when we come. We've lost a wonderful wife. We've lost an incredible mother, grandmother, advisor, friend, chaser, out of the houser person. And in my opinion, we've suffered a huge loss. But she taught me, and I hope she taught you too, what's really important in life. To love and support and care for friends and to have family in our lives and to have those families close to us. We're better off for having known her. It was a great privilege to be her pastor, to be her friend. And I can understand why the church is full today. And I can understand why there were so many people last night at the funeral home. Thank you all for all your incredible support. I know it just won't have been there last night. Keep up the great work. And Sharon, thank you for being in our lives and loving us in your own special way and loving us for who we are. We will miss you for sure, but we will never forget. Amen. Well, here we are again, too soon. Matthew 5, 4 states, Blessed are those that mourn, for they shall be comforted. It's a very short verse, but it brings me a lot of peace when I read that verse. As I prepare to do these things for family members, I often think of words. I pick adjectives of how do you, how do you describe, what, who describes this person? When I worked with this one for Aunt Sharon, the words came very quickly for me. She was kind loving, giving, caring, slightly opinionated at times, especially when she saw people at Walmart wearing their pajamas. <laughs> but she also loved her Lord. Psalm 147.3 states, He heals the brokenhearted, and he binds up their wounds. Memories help us heal our heart and bind our wounds. Ronald Reagan once said, Wherever a beautiful soul has been, there is a trail of beautiful memories. One vivid memory I have of Aunt Sharon is her wedding day. I remember it as if it were yesterday. I remember the dress I wore. I remember the color of the dress, mainly because my mom dressed my sister the same, so we had to wear those same dresses. But I remember that day. Aunt Sharon Hinderleiter was a, an attendant. Mom was an attendant. Aunt Sharon in her tea-length wedding gown, nervous but beautiful. I remember that August 1st day. It was hot. But of course, when you're marrying a farmer, you don't get to choose when you can marry automatically. You have to do it either before harvest, after harvest, before planting, or after planting. 58 years ago, I remember that day. Aunt Sharon actually taught me to drive. Now, if it isn't up to snuff, and if I'm not that good at it, it's Aunt Sharon's fault. She taught me to parallel park. She taught me to pull into parking spots. She actually took me on the day I actually took my driving test, and I passed. Aunt Sharon, when she first was married, actually, they lived in a trailer across the driveway across from Uncle Norma's family. And I used to go out there when she'd be busy because she was still working at Sigico at the time. And she gardened a lot. She, she put a lot of vegetables up. And I'd go out and help her wash her windows and help her keep her house clean. 
and stuff and when she was really busy. She cut a lot of grass at that time, too. She was always mowing grass. We all have a lot of memories of her. Even my cousins and nephews and my brother were talking about memories just this week about how they used to go to the farm and they used to help out on the farm. They were picking up bales, throwing them on the wagon as Donnie drove the tractor. I also know that Aunt Sharon gave a couple of us nicknames. One particular nickname she gave was to my cousin Dawn. She called her Sweet Pea. Now Sweet Pea was supposed to go to Aunt Sharon with one night and spend the night with her brothers. Well, Sweet Pea, about dark time, was wanting her mom pretty badly, so she pushed all the buttons, and Aunt Sharon had probably had all she could take, and she finally just popped her on her bottom, and she said, finally she settled down. When, it, when Dawn was here for Mom's funeral in September, Aunt Sharon called her Sweet Pea. And Aunt Sharon asked her, are you still, are you still scarred for life? Because Dawn swears that that pop on her bottom scarred her for life. She's sure of it. I don't think that had anything to do with it. <laughs> Another favorite memory I have, and probably a lot of people here have, if you ever had a birthday, you probably got a phone call. We got phone calls. Just last Saturday on the 14th, Aunt Sharon called me on my birthday. I still have that phone call on my voicemail. Not only did we get birthday phone calls, we got birthday cards. And there was always a dollar bill on that birthday card. It didn't matter if you were six or 66, when you opened up that envelope and there was a dollar bill in there, it made you smile. And I know for a fact that Aunt Ruby collected all of her dollar bills and saved them until she had a pretty good stack of one dollar bills. A week ago Sunday, my phone was ringing as I got into my car after church, and it was Aunt Sharon saying, pick a place you want to go out to eat. We're going to, Uncle Norman and I are going to take you out to eat lunch. So we went to Culver's. Two and a half hours later, we were still there because we were talking to everybody in the place. But it also reminded me of the time that Aunt Sharon and Uncle Norman would call and say, we're coming in. What do you want to eat? When Mom was still alive. And he would come in, and they'd stop and pick up sandwiches and pick up drinks and pick up French fries. And we'd stop at, he'd stop at Mom's, and we'd sit there for hours solving all the world's problems, even doing a little bit of farming sometimes sitting there at that kitchen table. Those were great memories. When mom died, I kind of moved Aunt Sharon into her position. Because you always need that person that you can pick up that phone when something great's going on in your life, and you can give her a call and say, guess what happened today? Or some days you just needed to vent that you had something that wasn't going well that day. She, she and I have shared secrets, and there's still secrets that we're keeping. Aunt Sharon was always very giving, as she could be her time, but she was always upset, too, that she didn't have time to spend time with me to help with mom. That bothered her quite a bit. She was upset she wasn't able to come to the house when we were getting mom's house ready to, to get it moved and to get it sold. That bothered her quite a bit. She used to call me and she'd say, what's going on in there? So, I, you know, that was just her normal question. She never failed to ask about how's planting going, how's harvest going, and she would always wonder. She said, I won't keep you very long. I know you're busy. An hour and 15 minutes later, we finished that call. <laughs> but let me tell you about the love she had for her grandsons. First of all, if you knew Aunt Sharon, you knew about her grandsons. She always bragged about their academic abilities, their honor rolls. I heard about Nate and all of his band competitions. Jake, about his scouting promotions. Chase, his football. She had a fierce love for these guys and was very, very proud of them. She was the last sibling on our side of our family. I really expected to have her around here for at least another 10, 15 years, and she didn't do that for me. She was the person I could call up and say, do you remember when this happened? She said, well, maybe a little bit of it, but she was the person that I could get memories from. So I say to you right now, make new memories. 
And if you've got some old memories, if you've heard that same story a hundred times, listen to it again. Commit it to your memory. Commit it to your heart. Because once that person's gone on that side of the family, those memories can be gone too. So my wish for you today and for me is that we be more like Sharon, that we be more loving, that we be kinder, more caring, and that we could love the Lord the way she loved the Lord. Uncle Norman, Richard, Rodney, Nate, Jake, and Chase, I have a verse for you. There is nothing I can say to take away your hurt, but you have my shoulder to cry on, and you have my loving hugs, and know that I will be there for you if you need me. The stories that have been spoken of are stories that we will continue to share. If you would like to join us uh, downstairs uh, following the committal in the, at the cemetery, I want to just share with you before we close with the prayer um, how we will conclude. <clears throat> we'll share in a closing prayer and the Lord's Prayer together. Um, I will have some final words and then we'll sing together another one of her favorite hymns, Jesus Loves Me. As that hymn is being sung, I would ask that we begin to dismiss our gathered guests. You are welcome to be able to come forward and to pay final respects um, and then make your way around the outside of the sanctuary into the foyer. If you plan on joining us in the cemetery, once things conclude here, Sharon's family will join you in the foyer and then we will meet you outside the double glass doors and we'll make our way into the cemetery. Following our time in the cemetery, we will then come and join together downstairs for a meal that's been graciously prepared for all of you. For those of you that don't feel like you would like to be out in the cemetery, um, that it'd be difficult to walk or it might be too cold or something like that, we welcome you to simply join us downstairs and we will be back with you once we conclude in the cemetery. Before we get to all of that, however, Let's close this gathering today with a moment of prayer. Would you please pause? Eternal and gracious God, we draw now closer to the end of this gathering in this space at this time with this wonderful woman. Even though we trust that she has entered those gates and that she resides in a place with you, free of everything that we deal with here in this earthly life, free of pain, free of sadness, free of any ailments, free of any of those things, it's still a difficult moment for us to share our final goodbye. Even though we praise you for all that she meant to each of us in her own special way, we still are sad, we still miss her, we still long to hear her voice or to feel her hug. So we pray today that you, you let your light and love and healing spirit shine upon every one of us, whether we are gathered here in this sanctuary or that we've joined this gathering virtual. Help us to believe where we have not seen, that your presence may lead us through our years and that your guidance will bring us at last to all of those who have left before us in a reunion, in an eternal home promised to all of us. We offer this prayer through Jesus Christ and we ask that you hear us honoring you and Sharon when together we share these words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, 
as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Sharon is now safe, and she has passed through the barrier and is free to another reality to experience whatever a joy awaits her there. But it's important for us to share our final goodbye as we commit her body to its natural end. Sharon Schrader, we bless you and we thank you for being a part of our life. We honor your life on earth and we pray for your peace ever after. We will never forget you. And so it is that it is time for us to not say goodbye, but until we meet again. It's time for us to begin to accept that Sharon has answered her call to return to that eternal home. It's time for us to recognize that death is not the enemy, but the ultimate healer. And so as we prepare to depart this place, may the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and journeying with you throughout the chapters that remain in your lives. As we prepare to depart, let us depart in peace. I invite you to stand as we join together in singing, Jesus Loves Me.